This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and this is Mina, Marco, and me on Monday about energy. And we're broadcasting today, if you were wondering, uh, even though it's Martin Luther King Day. We follow the um, holiday schedule in the Pioneer Plaza, and it's open, so we're open. Um, so we have Mina, Mina Morita on the phone today. Uh, she joins us uh, by VoIP from uh, Kauai, and we're going to talk about a number of interesting things. Then I suppose the first thing, Mina, is what happened on Saturday. It was so interesting. It opened so many questions. How did it affect people? Right. In, how, did it affect, how did it affect you? Well, first of all, I was on Oahu for the weekend, staying in the Kahala area. Yeah. And I had um, my granddaughter, who's 12 years old, and her friend, who's also 12 years old. And we were house-sitting for a friend of mine. And, you know, even though I have the um, emergency notification um, button on my iPhone, I didn't get a um, message, alert message. Oh. But my granddaughter, but my granddaughter and her friend did. So and, what, what uh, carrier you know, I, do you have on your phone, Mina? I have AT&T. Her mm -hmm. friend also has AT&T, but my granddaughter has Verizon. Mm. So I don't th I don't think it was a carrier issue. Mm. And and here I you know as soon as she showed me the message, I turned on the um I went online to um public radio and it, it was just their regular programming going. And then I turned on, oh, I had the television on um, cable news. I was watching MSNBC, and there were no scrolls at the bottom. There were no interruptions. Um, you know, I, I, I searched up and down for a local station. When I finally found one, again, no scrolls, nothing. And so their friends were calling each other they were getting calls from other 12 year olds and i and i'm sitting there thinking wow is this a hoax is this a prank yeah well Among there you go the kids. 12 year olds find out about it before we do eh right and i didn't hear from any adults you know i didn't hear any sirens so you know i i, I spent a good 10 minutes trying to find out more information which i couldn't find anywhere mm -hmm. And um, so finally, oh, then my daughter called me from Kauai, panicked, because um, as soon as they got the alert, the sirens also went off. And she had my 10-year-old granddaughter at home um, by herself while she was running errands with her 4-year-old. And uh, she happened to be at the preschool helping to um, clean. And the people there said, you know, leave the four-year-old with them and head back home to be with her 10-year-old um, um, who was about a 10-minute drive away. And she did that. And when she got home, she panicked because she didn't have a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, while I was trying to fill up containers of water and get into a, um, under the stairwell of my friend's house, you know, it was going, God, you know, <laughs> where, where she had really poor phone reception. So it was really hectic. So it was trying to calm my daughter down on Kauai, fill up water and get into a stairwell where there's no uh, phone reception. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how did the stand down take place? When did you learn that it was a, uh... It was a false alarm. Um, after after a while, then only one of the phones got the um, the message that it was um, a mistake. Hmm. So even that that on its own was crazy because, and I can't even remember whose phone got the mistake, and it wasn't. It, Sure, yeah, but it would, it would follow that if you if you get the false message, and there's going to be a retraction, 
then all the phones mm -hmm. that got the false message should also get the retraction, but that didn't happen apparently. Yeah, only what at least one of the phones got, got the yeah. retraction. Strange, strange, <laughs> strange. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was and, that was really a, so, it was a circus, and uh, uh, you know I guess I'm I'm curious as to what lessons you took away from it about the emergency management agency, about people in general, about Hawaii as a you know as a as a place which could be a target, and uh, how it could respond in in the case of a real attack. Well, I you know again I think it, you when you listen to all the news reports now. You know, they have talked about other incidents in the past where um, sensors were um, wrong or there were other human errors. Um, and it's scary. I mean, so the only, the only solution now, I think, is really not, not to be placed in these kinds of um, potential scenarios where you know, everything is a, um, a hair trigger away. But the other takeaway for me, and especially after being in government for so long, um, you know, and just reflecting, it's, it's like, why did all these systems fail for one thing? And then the second thing, you know, if this really is the best form of communication and getting these alerts out um, via cell phones, then how come not all of the phones um, were activated? Because I heard from, after I posted on Facebook, numerous people contacted me saying, you know, they, um, they do have their notifications on and they didn't get messages. So, you know, what's the protocol for cell phone providers um, and and again, in a good way, it was a good thing that the message wasn't wild, uh, widespread. Yeah. But on the other hand, why did it fail too? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and what troubles me is that the message was a message of very serious importance. It was erroneous. Yeah. But it was of yeah. very serious importance. And if there had mm -hmm. been an, an, inter, an intercontinental ballistic missile coming our way, um, did people, you know, did that seriousness, um, you know, was that published to people? Did they accept that? Most, maybe this is Monday morning after, but most people I talked to figured out that it was, a, it was false in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh -huh. I shouldn't say figured out, you know, they, they came to the conclusion that it was not robust enough uh, there were other factors that convinced them it couldn't be true. And I suppose, you know, the bottom line is they didn't believe that Kim Jong-un would actually do it anyway. Um, but what troubles uh -huh. me is that if it had been a real message, uh, it did not right. have any effect. Um, although there were a couple of, uh, you know, bizarre anecdotal cases where, like, a father put his kids down a manhole cover to protect them. There was another case where yeah. a woman pulled an IV out of her arm because she didn't want to die connected to an IV um, and all these other yeah. strange things. But mostly, people didn't do anything much. And what worries me is yeah. if there were a real emergency, um, I mean, right. such, a, such as an extreme weather emergency, right, uh, with a you yeah. know, bad storm about to hit the Hawaii, I, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, have lost, um, you know, confidence in the system if they ever had it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would not react mm -hmm. properly so as to save themselves and the community, especially after what happened Saturday. What do you think? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree because I spent you know a, a good part of the time trying to figure out if this was a hoax or not. Yeah. You yeah. know be, because you, you know you look at my contained environment. I can't find anything on television. I didn't hear the sirens, but I got two 12-year-olds with this message on their phone. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Maybe they, they hacked the system, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know and I, I, I'm thinking, God, this is pretty sophisticated. It looks real. What, so, do you think the, uh, uh, what do you think the political implications of this are? There's a lot of press all over the country all over the world, pointing a very, a very hot finger to David Ige. Um, 
Uh, and in fact, Trump made a comment about he complimented David Ige for <coughs> having uh, admitted the mistake, I guess. <clears throat> but what do you think, uh, what yeah. effect does this have on David Ige's candidacy in the gubernatorial race later this year? Well, I think there's certainly people that want to see some heads roll and want some sacrificial lambs. But I think, I think that's the least of our problems. You know, it, it's now, now we know, you know, for something as important, you can't rely on one person, um, you know, to be able to pull the trigger. You know, you, you have to have some kind of verification. And, and I think for those civil defense workers is this is really serious. And before they press um, the mouse, click the mouse, they better be reading the screen. Yeah. And <laughs> so, yeah. so I, you, you know, to me, the only thing is more training, um, more, um, you know, the double check. You got to double check. Yeah. You know, because, you know, uh, it's what that measure twice, cut once <laughs> kind of yeah, scenario. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, uh-huh. And when, and when and you're you dealing know, with emergent situations like this, you know, there is an inevitable comparison to the situation where somebody is in a bunker um, with a button mm -hmm. uh, to, to push on, uh, you know, launching a nuclear weapon, uh, either from this country or any other, uh, and protocols mm -hmm. do go wrong. We see that on Saturday. And so conceivably, uh -huh. the same kind of failure that took place on Saturday could take place for a much more serious, um, you know, a, a button push such as launching a, a, yeah. a nuclear weapon. And that's what's that's really scary. In a world uh, where we're having more talk about nuclear weapons, where there's more tension over war than I can remember, um, right. I'm, I'm really concerned that this same sort of protocol failure could happen in other contexts, either here or in other countries, and involve the whole world yeah. in a global, uh, you know, a, a global uh, a conflagration uh, immediately in seconds. And, and then it wouldn't, we wouldn't matter if you got a warning or not. You'd be toast. Right, right. And then I think, you know, the other lesson learned here is, you know, how little we know about the after effects yeah. of this kind of scenarios. And, you know, related to energy, I mean, this is something I never had to worry about when I was the chair of the Public Utilities Commission. Yes, we were concerned about um, disaster um, protocols, um, you know, especially during hurricane season and all the pieces were in place that the, that the, um, the, the plans were up to date on, on these kinds of protocols. And you know, we didn't have much of a role as a regulator just to make sure that these plans were in place. Yeah. But, you know, in, in thinking about this, it's like in in an aftermath kind of scenario, what happens to the infrastructure? I mean, how is the infrastructure affected by any kind of um, radiation fallout? Yeah. You know, and if we're if we're highly dependent on solar, you know, how does it affect um, solar energy production? Yeah, I'm not sure they, and, yeah, I'm not sure they figured that out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've had a number of shows uh, from uh, Carl Kim in the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, whose office is actually mm -hmm. right across the street from our studio. And I'd like to get him on mm -hmm. so he can tell us, uh, you know, uh, how those plans are, how they, those plans may be modified after um, this incident. I think it's a, it's a shakeup for us all, not only in the, in the failure of uh, good communication, but in, in the notion of the people in general had no clue about what to do. You know, and it, it, yeah. it would have been just so easy for everybody to get on the highway, run somewhere, you know, for the lack of mm -hmm. other instructions and wind up in a great big traffic jam, um, as, as yeah. has been the case in, in tsunami warnings in the past. Anyway, let's take a short right. short break, Mina. We'll come back, and I would like to ask you about the session coming up on Wednesday of this week, and uh, about okay. you know some of the issues relating to energy that are undoubtedly going to be on the table. That's Mina Morita, energy right. consultant, 
former chair of the PUC, uh, a former representative in the Hawaii legislature. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. My name is Mark Sklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. We're back. We're live with Mina Morita here on Mina, Marco, and me on Monday about energy. We've been talking about, you know, the, the issue of the time, which is the false alarm uh, on Saturday morning. But uh, continuing that, um, you know, we have a session coming up on the 17th. And although, you know, the session formally begins on the 17th, actually committees of the legislature have been operating for several weeks anyway, maybe more. And one of the things, as Mina mentioned to me during the, the break, one of the things they will cover for sure in some detail with an investigation of some kind um, will be what happened on Saturday morning, the false nuclear alarm. What do you think is going to happen on that, Mina? Well, I, again, I hope they take it um, one step further because we, you know, we, we do have a good idea of what happened, what, what were the failure points um, on, on Saturday. But I, I think we need to go one step further and understand what the fixes are or will be and how, how, how they're going to approach it and um, how quickly they're going to approach it. And, um, and like I said, if, if we're relying on our cell phones for the, the quickest form of communication, then some of the questions that are going through my mind is, do we have the cell phone service capacity to um, handle all the calls that are going to be flooding um, our telecommunication services during that period? And I think we only have to look to the um, Japanese tsunami in 2011, where um, the telecommunications system, the cellular system, was just jammed and um, uh, people were having a hard time uh, receiving messages or sending messages or phone calls. So, you know, just sort of compare that and see if, um, if our services can handle the inundation because what you did hear from people was, um, you know, everybody was on their phone trying to locate their family, uh, saying goodbyes, you know, to, to, to people. I guess that's true, of, yeah, yeah. Because they believed yeah. it, they believed it, and, and a good number of people, good percentage of the population locally believed it, and uh, they, they thought their life uh, was over. And that's a pretty uh -huh. interesting place to be on a given Saturday morning. But, you know, you talk about right. an inundation of telephone calls. I, I find this question inherent in that. So who do you call? Well, you know, you call your family, but that doesn't help you much. I mean, you, you know, you have mm -hmm. some consolation and, and uh, you have a last moment with somebody who you didn't, you know, didn't think you'd have to have a, a last moment so soon. But, um, but in fact, you know, there's no, there's no single place to call. My wife, um, who reacted very well to this, very cool, she called the police, uh -huh. called 911. And she said, what do we yeah. do? What do you want us to do? And the 911 said, find shelter immediately. Well, that's nice. Uh -huh. I mean, the, you know, the public has no idea what to do or who to call. And the people they might naturally call, like 911, they don't have any idea either. <clears throat> they were no better informed than anyone else getting that message. 
So I, there's a lot of work to be done here. I mean, and I, and I hope the legislature gets into it because I think central to this is our um, belief and confidence in our government. And this, to me, this right. shakes public confidence in government. It's not a good thing. Well, what shook my confidence is that, you know, they use social media, Facebook and Twitter to get the message out that this was a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I just, it, it, you know. <laughs> well, you reach and, the 12-year-olds. <laughs> That's what really shook my confidence, you know, that, that I had to rely on Facebook or Twitter, which I didn't. You know, I was relying on the traditional modes, mm -hmm. a siren, a siren to give the all clear notice yeah. or, or um, something on the radio or television. Yeah. And, and so, um, I, again, how do you ingrain in people what is the fastest way to get information out? Yeah, well, I mean, it's an interesting on. question. If it wasn't on white public radio and it wasn't on, I think, the AM channels for some time, and it wasn't mm -hmm. on uh, local television or, for that matter, CNN, which is quick on responding to these things, um, you know, then we have to, we have to uh, up our game on that. I mean, all the media. We have to up our game. It's very interesting that when I, when I Googled this, only a few minutes after the warning came through, only place that had a news story on it, this is really interesting, was a website of an uh, online um, news service um, in, in the UK called express.co.uk. And I thought that was very interesting mm -hmm. that they would have information about a false alarm in Hawaii before any of the American TV channels or you know, uh, news media. Um, in any event, it shows oh. it shows that our our news media they have to be quicker on this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how you know now so. that the session is going to start uh, in only uh, you know two days from now, um, and certainly people are you know here's Monday morning, uh, people are talking more and more about this. Um, how does this affect the session? Do you think aside from the investigation we spoke about? How does this affect um, you know the way lawmakers will handle issues and including energy issues? Do you see th any change you know from the ordinary uh, ebb and flow, or, or will it be different somehow? Well, I don't think that there will be anything noticeably different, and I, I think one of the um, challenges at the legislature it is it appears to be, and this is nationwide, it's just not here, but just to be reactive to situations and think a law is going to fix it. And, um, you know, and then at the end of the session, kind of pat yourself on the back and, and because they passed the law. <laughs> just because you passed the law, first of all, doesn't mean it's good policy, nor nor does it is it any guarantee to fix the problem. Yeah. You know, you you you, you know, you have to have resources. You have to have people aligned um, to do the action, as you well know, and that we talk about frequently um, in the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. So uh, that's one of my fears, that everything will be reactive to this situation. Uh. Um, and, and, and so basically what we really need is leadership and confidence in leadership in the um, Hawaii Emergency Management um, Agency. Um, having the confidence that they, they can um, restructure and make all the corrections needed for a, um, uh, a, a, a this kind of dire uh, emergency yeah. situation. Yeah, and, and that should be very that's simple leadership. It's simply getting the organization, the agency, squared away, at least to the level of the mm -hmm. federal agencies <coughs> who are responsible for yeah. issues like this. But you know what, what strikes me from what you say, Mina, is that this could suck all the oxygen out of the session. 
they spent a lot of time yep. talking about this. What about the regular things? This could be a huge distraction from the real priorities yeah. the legislature should be handling. Right, right. And, you know, a, a lot of our problems um, that we face now are really serious. They're long term. Uh, they require resources. And, and again, we go back to, to leadership, you know, the, the leadership and the, and the staffing capacity and resources to deal with these really, really big problems that we have. Yeah, well, it, and, that goes I mean, to, uh, and that goes to the election year, you know, when candidates right now, as we speak, are trying to shape their platforms, <clears throat> trying to figure out what mm -hmm. their priorities are and what, um, you know, they ought to be telling their constituents, uh, you know, the important issues are. Um, and I think there's a risk of them being distracted too. Um, I, I think mm -hmm. the bottom line is uh, we've got to, we've got to, uh, you know, treat the priorities here not only in the session starting on Wednesday, but you know, in the election and in all the all the rhetoric mm -hmm. around the election. But I fear, right. I fear we'll be distracted. I fear everything will be distracted, and that's too bad. And I feel, I feel right. also that this will have a pretty significant effect on the administration. Um, and on, on parties yeah. close to the state administration because there'll be the blame game. Um, and it could be, uh -huh. I mean, some people are speculating that David Ige lost the election on Saturday morning. Uh, how do you feel, you know, wh what, what effect is this going to have on the candidates who are running for office this year? Well, I, I, again, you know, this is when, um, you know, real leaders step up to the plate, right? So I, I, I think it's, I, I, I don't think people will remember um, nine months from now what happened. Maybe nine days. No, nine months. <laughs> maybe know, nine what, days. What the, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> nine days. So, so this is still fresh in everybody's mind. People want to play the blame game. But I think, again, if we have real leadership here, I think he has to prove himself going into um, the, the um, campaign season yeah. that these changes have been made, that yeah. people yeah. have confidence yeah. in, in, the, in the changes that ought to be made yeah. and um, restore that sense of confidence in government. Yeah. So he has an opportunity here to do that. But then again, if he doesn't do it, of course people are going to make the changes. Yeah. So, so I think you know it, the, the major um, determinant for the gubernatorial race is really who who do people have more confidence in going forward? Yeah. Well, there's two things I, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, close with. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to our primary topic. Um, we were distracted with the false alarm, but we were going <laughs> to we were going to talk about tax credits in the 2018 legislature, and we'll reserve that for next time. It'll be equally uh, relevant and probative then. And the, and the second thing okay. uh, I wanted I wanted to close with, Mina, is it's so nice to hear your voice and know that both you and I are still alive even after Saturday. <laughs> Staying here, Jay. It's, you know, it was really funny because I was watching the sunrise Sunday, uh, Saturday morning because, uh, you know, the house that we were, were staying at just has a spectacular view and um, looking east to see the sunrise. So the day started off great with, you know, this spectacular sunrise. <laughs> and I'm happy to say Sunday started off great with a spectacular sunrise. So it was just a little reset button and we start all over again. Yep, yeah, we do. <laughs> with maybe a, a more uh, in-depth appreciation of the world as it is. Well, thank you, Mina. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk to you okay, in two thanks, weeks. Okay, thanks, Jay. Take care. Have a good holiday. Bye-bye. You too. Aloha.